Imagine trying to sell a cake pop to people who has never heard of it before. How would you describe this? Is it a coffee cake on a stick? But cakes are meant to be eaten with a fork on a plate at the table after dinner. Now cake pop is a cake that's shaped like a lollipop, but it's not meant for kids like a lollipop. But if it's not that, what is it? It's so confusing. And how do you price it? Do you price it like a cake? These are the kind of questions you want to ask yourself. If you're trying to figure out your product's positioning, as you can see, Positioning is such a critical part of a business that it impacts every part of your market, including messaging, audience targeting, segmentation, and campaign development. The problem for most marketing teams is that they just happen to fall into their positioning like people fall to love. Wink, wink. <laughs> if we fail at positioning, we fail at marketing and sales. And if we fail at marketing and sales, the entire business just fails. That's where April Dudford comes in. She is a sought after speaker and recognized expert in positioning, having launched and sold it with hundreds of successful startups. April is the author of my favorite and best selling book, Obviously Awesome. I've read it so many times, then it looks so banged up and beat up because I've even lent it out to other people. In this video, I'm going to share with you some nuggets of wisdom from this book to help you nail your product positioning. Before I continue, make sure to smash the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss more videos that will help power up your marketing from us. Let's first talk about what is positioning even. April defines it as context setting for products. The right kind of context can be the difference between a customer paying you $1 for your service or $1,000 per month for that same service. April Dunford gives an example in her book about a famous experiment by the Washington Post. They took Joshua Bell, an internationally acclaimed violinist. He regularly sells out concert halls where tickets cost $300 or more. But in this experiment, he played violin outside a busy subway station in Washington, D.C. during the morning commute. His total earnings for that concert, $32.17. Can you believe it? It's the same for your product. How you position your product can make it worth more be easier to sell and market and retain more users than in another context. In other words, it's easier to do marketing. Before we continue, I wanna thank those who made this video possible, 42 Agency. Now, when you're in scale-up mode and you have KPIs to hit, the pressure is on to deliver demos and signups. And it's a lot to handle, demand gen, email sequences, rev ops, and even more. That's where 42 Agency, founded by my good friend, Camille Rexton, can help you. They're a strategic partner that's helped B2B SaaS companies like ProfitWell, Teamworks, Prod Social, and HubDoc build a predictable revenue engine. If you're looking for performance experts and creatives to solve your marketing problems at a fraction of the cost of in-house, look no further. Go to 42agency.com to talk to a strategist to learn how you can build a high efficiency revenue engine now. You can find that link in the description below. Another marketing power-ups with positioning is that it helps people understand what your product is right away. We rely on context to make thousands of little decisions about whether something is worth our time. This is especially true for innovative products that people have never encountered before. April actually brings up a really great example with a cake pop that we brought up earlier. Let's say you want to pursue people who like to eat cake but without a fork. So you put a stick in a cake so people can eat it while walking down the street. And you call it a cake on a stick. Is that the best way to position your product? Right up front, you set the context for what your product is all about. When we think about cakes, we think of bigger slices, needing a fork, has some frostings, and sticks don't really belong in a cake. You've actually created a Franken cake if you put a stick in a cake. <laughs> Who would want to eat that? However, you roll the cake into a ball, and then you position your product as a lollipop. All of a sudden, the stick makes sense. The stick and the ball belong, and it's a snack and not a dessert. So cake pop is easy to understand and easy way to pitch it as a snack on the go for coffee drinking adults rather than a run of the mill lollipop intended for kids. The whole point of this is when we encounter something new, we will try to make sense of it by gathering together all the little clues we can quickly find to determine how we should think about this new thing. Without this context, products are very hard to understand and the whole company suffers. As marketers, we generally fail to consider other potentially better ways to position our products because we're not deliberately positioning them. Now, before I share April's five ingredients of great positioning, if you're enjoying this so far, make sure to subscribe to the weekly newsletter, Marketing Power Ups. It's where I share the secret strategies and techniques of world-class marketers that they use to hit their KPIs consistently and wow their colleagues. You can go to marketingpowerups.com to subscribe now completely for free. First, competitive alternatives. These are what your customers would do or use if your solution didn't exist. Alternatives to your product can be hired intern to do it, 
use a spreadsheet, even suffer along with a problem and do nothing. It's so important to really understand what your customers compare your solutions with because that's the yardstick they use to define what better looks like. Second, unique attributes. This is your secret sauce. What are things you can do better than competitive alternatives? This could be things like your delivery model, your business model, or your specific expertise. It could be that you use kosher salt for your cake pops. Third, value and proof. What are the benefits of your product that enable customers to do their job better. If the unique attributes are your secret sauce, then the value is the reason why someone might care about your sauce at all. If you use kosher salt in your secret sauce, why would your target customer care about that? Number four, target market characteristics. Your target market is the customers who buy quickly, rarely ask for discounts, and tell their friends about your offering. What is it about these customers that make them love your product more than any other? Fifth is market category. The market you describe yourself as part of helps customers understand what your product is quickly. I'm going back to the cake pop example, if you describe your product as a cake, you will assume that it's a fancy dessert that's eaten after a meal. You also know how much a slice of cake would cost. Remember that your category can work for you or against you because you're setting the context of your competitors, what features users expect, and how your product should function or be used. And number six, as a bonus, relevant trends. Another way to provide people context in what market category your product is in is by using trends your customers understand and care about. In tech, AI seems to be all the rage, so maybe it's it's an air-powered cake pop. I don't even know what that is. Each component has a relationship with the others. Your unique attributes are only relevant when compared with competitive alternatives. Those attributes drive the value of your product, which determines who the best target customers are, which in turn highlights which market category is the best one to highlight your value. Trends must be relevant to your target customers and can be used in combination with your market category. Now that you know the ingredients, April gives us the 10 step recipe for great positioning. Now I won't be able to go in depth with this. I suggest you actually go buy her book. I'm not sponsored by her at all. I just love her book and, and it's totally worth it. So step one, understand who your best fit customers are. Your best fit customers hold the key to understanding what your product is. They understood your product and bought from you quickly, even though it might not be the cheapest in the market. They represent the perfect type of customer you want to buy from you. Step number two, form a positioning team. April's positioning process works best when it's a team effort. Ideally from across different functions within the company, each team from sales to marketing to customer success can bring a unique point of view relative to how customers perceive and experience the product. Step number three, align your positioning vocabulary and let go of your positioning baggage. Consider possible new ways to think about your product. You have to get on the same page with everyone on your team. What positioning means and why it's so important. What are your team's goals and expected outcomes? Some team members might come with preconceived notions about what positioning is and how it should be done. Step number four, list your three competitive alternatives. The features of your product and the value they provide are only unique, interesting, and valuable when a customer perceives them in relation to alternatives. Step five, isolate your unique attributes or features. Strong positioning is centered on what a product does best. Once you have a list of competitive alternatives, the next step is to figure out what makes you different and better than those alternatives. Step number six, map the attributes to the value teams. Attributes or features are a starting point, but what customers care about is what these features can do for them. For example, the value of a feature like 15 megapixel camera could be photos that are sharp even when printed or zoomed in. Features enable benefits, which can be translated into value in unique customer terms. Step number seven, determine who cares a lot. Once you have a good understanding of value that your product delivers versus other alternatives, you can look at which customers really care about the value from previous steps. In marketing, this is called segmentation, but you wanna go beyond their demographic attributes such as small business, business with 100 to 2,000 employees, a usable or actionable segmentation captures a list of the persons or companies easily identifiable characteristics that make them really care about what you do and your product. For businesses, it could be that the way that they sell, other products they have invested in, or the skills they have or don't have inside the company. Step number eight is find a market frame or reference that puts your strengths at the center and determine how to position it. As previously discussed, prospects develop a set of assumptions based on the market they pick for your product. Markets such as database, bicycle, email marketing tool mean something to customers. It gives them an idea of expected features, price range, and competitors. In the context of this exercise, a market needs to be something that already exists in the customer's minds. 
Step number nine, layer on a trend, but be very careful. Once you have determined your market context, you can start to think about how you layer a trend on top of your positioning to help potential customers understand why your offering is important to them right now. This step is optional, but potentially really powerful. If you go about it, do it carefully. Step number 10 is capture your positioning so it can be shared. Positioning on its own isn't useful to the company. Once you have worked through your positioning, you need to share it across the organization. Positioning needs to have buy-in so it can be used to inform branding, marketing campaigns, sales strategy, product position, customer success strategy. I know this is a lot. Thankfully, people put together a positioning canvas that you can use that includes product name, one-line description, as well as market category, competitive alternatives, attributes, value, customer segments in the way that shows the relationship between them. You can download it at aprildunford.com now. Now to wrap it up, great positioning really comes by default. If you want to succeed, you have to determine the best way to position your product. Delivery, try, fail, test, then try again. You have to position yourself in the market that makes your strength obvious to people who want to buy it. And that's a true marketing power up. Which product has great positioning? Let me know in the comments. And if you've read people's book before, what's one thing that's helped you with it? Love to hear. I'll type it in the comments. So all for now, this is Rally John from Marketing Power Ups. Until the next video. Bye.